If you own a garage or a shop, we all know that you never have enough space to do your work or to store all of your tools and everything else that you own. So we need more workbenches. We need more space to do our work. And today, that's what we're gonna be doing. We got the lumber right here. We got the new tabletop and we're gonna be putting it right against this wall with all these brand new outlets that were just wired in specifically for the bench. Welcome to the Kinsla Bros DIY. So today we're going to be building another workbench for our garage. Because most cases, when you have a garage or a shop, you always need more workspace, more storage, whatever it may be, more areas to mount tools so you don't have to find workspace. The bench that we're going to be building is very similar to the bench that we have already built right here. We have the same top, but it's gonna be a little bit longer this time. And now it is time to go over the tools that you will need to make a bench just like this. Obviously, we are going to need an impact drill, different sizes of screws. These screws are gonna be for attaching your framing to the countertop. And then we have this size screw for attaching the plywood on your shelf to the framing as well. So these are inch and a quarter screws. And these are two inch screws. And for the main framing, we have the Torx screws. These are all Torx and these are the three inch screws. So we need blue tape so we can cut down the countertop to the length that we would like. We need a tape measure, of course. We need a skill saw so we can cut out the notches for the plywood on the shelf. We need a four foot level. And then we also need, of course, a speed square for marking our two by fours, a chalk line for cutting our plywood, pencils. Obviously we need a hammer and we need a pry bar if anything need to be taken apart or moved around. We need the circular saw so we can cut our plywood to the length that we need. Also, we'll be using a four foot square as well to cut the plywood. Pretty basic tools that you need. Most people have a lot of these tools. Also, it would help to have some eye protection to be safe. Um, wearing a tool belt makes it a little bit easier as well. Right now, we need to start with the framing, the main framing for the table. So now that we have our length for the table, we need to figure out our height for the framing, allowing for the width of the top with the backsplash. So with that top, it is four inches the width. So we wanna be about a good half inch or inch below all of the outlets on this wall. So if we made, if we made our framing come up to 39 inches, and if you add four inches to that, we would be right at 43 inches, which would give us a little over an inch of room. Safety first. Now that we have that length, now we need to get the width or the depth of the table. Since I've already made a table identical to this, we can just go and steal the measurement right off of this, which is 22 and 3 quarter. So once again, since I've already built this bench already, we're going to take the measurements from here, but you could be building a totally different bench with different measurements, but this is how this one is gonna go. As you can see under here, I have supports on both sides of my legs, which would be three inches less than the 22 and three quarter that we just cut. All right, so after that, we have all the legs secured now. And I took the liberty of also marking where the shelf is going to go, which is 18 inches for the framing, and then we have the plywood that goes on top of that. So here's the back, the back rail for the plywood that we are going to put up right now. This is my 18 inch mark. 
This is where my framing starts and goes this way. So I'm going to put a screw here to hold my 2x4 on this hold my two by, hold my 2x4 on this end. And I'm coming over here and I'm going to start on this side. to level this leg in since this rail is the exact same size as the top rail we should be square and once we line up this end we will check it and see if it is indeed level see if the force of pulling those together with the flush works out in our favor. Looks pretty level for our workbench. Now it's time to put on our pre-cut boards that we had cut already. As you can see, we are continuing to put the rest of the supports on for each side of the legs. These are the 19 and 3 quarter inch pieces that we had cut beforehand, so we didn't have to cut them one by one, and we can just put them on as fast as we can. Make sure you line them up on both ends, making them flush with the back rail, and then flush with the front at that 18 inch mark where the framing is going to be, so the plow can rest on so that when we're done, the shelf will be 18 inches. And then to stop them from also going side to side, even though you have this here, these could still flex and move. So now we're going to stick a board on each side. So the last thing we got to put on before we flip it over and begin putting on the plywood shelf is this piece here that starts from here and goes to that end right here, which is why this is hanging by an inch and a half so it becomes flush. And that will be the last piece for which the shelf will lay on. So I'll take a quick measurement because I don't know what it just measures. And we are at an even, well, seven foot sixteenth, 84 and a sixteenth. Total of 36 and a quarter. So that puts us at 18 and an eighth. These were cut way back and we cut the beginning pieces. So make sure it's straight along the wood. Bring your other screw in. Now we can flip the bench over and see how we did. So I'll have my cameraman, Austin, help me with the flip, which is the other Kinsler Bro. We're going this way. Okay. Should be strong enough to just turn and then turn. Because <laughs> this is a bench that is way overbuilt. We have the half inch CDX plywood here. It's screwed in a couple of spots onto the top of the table. So we can use it as a makeshift sawhorse. And so we gotta go and measure the maximum width of our plywood. And we are at 22 and three quarter, which isn't a surprise because that's what we made everything. So we just came out onto here, mark 22 and three quarter, both ends. And then we'll take out the trusty chalk line, snap a line, and cut it with the Cirque saw. 
So if you're doing this by yourself, if your chalk line is in the middle of that whole loop there, you can line it up like that. It's got some little teeth on it. If you keep enough pressure there, you can get it done by yourself. Pull it pretty tight. You don't need to go over tight. Give her one snap. Should be good to go with your circular saw. If you're cutting plywood, it's good to set it, you know, just past cutting, which is easily done with this lever right here. Pull it in and out for any types of wood you're cutting. If it's two by four, two by four by four, or whatever it may be, just make it so it's just like that, just in case if you were laying over top of any other wood that you do not cut too far into the other framing that you may have or whatever you may be laying your plywood on to cut. some of you were wondering when I was going to eventually use the T-square because I did include it on the tools that we need. Put it on the factory side, not the side that I ripped. And that's our maximum length for our first rip. There's the first piece. Make some further measurements. First piece is ready to be screwed down. We're using the smaller Torx. Sure. All right, next piece, and then we'll fill in the ends. So with the other piece down here, we're just gonna use a little bit of magic and we're just gonna drop it and it's just gonna land in place. All right, ready? Look at that, magic in. Pretty much perfect. Time to pick up this top, put it up here, and then we're going to cut it and fasten it down. We're gonna go 11 foot, two inches for an inch overhang on both ends. Right there is where we wanna be. So we're gonna apply a couple of rows of tape right here. We are doing this so when we cut the top, the laminate or the Formica, I'm not sure what this is made out of, will not chip off as we go and kind of look crappy when we're done. So we want it to still look like it was a factory deal. tape off. Beautiful. Like it was factory done, but hold on. Stand off those edges. All right, we're on the home stretch. We got eight inch blocks. They're gonna go underneath that are gonna screw to the table and then to the top. With these screws, they're not gonna go through the top. It's crucial to not make that error if you're gonna do this, is to get a screw small enough to get into the top, but not to go through. So what we have here is, this is the size of our screw. Oh. There's about an eighth inch of play there, but if you don't sink them all the way, keep good pressure down and over. And it's there. So Hello. one more in this piece over here. 
Just like that, it gets fastened. We just gotta do that seven more times. And this build will be completed. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, it would be awesome if you would drop a thumbs up. And if you were new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button down in the corner and turn those notifications on so you know when we drop new videos. As always, thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one.